<laughs> the darkness growing on me on XFM 104.9. Oh, it's all going well already, isn't it? The microphones fell apart. Carl's shouting because he got headphones on. <laughs> His music's uh, up too late. Canfield level. <laughs> God, he got pre out. Look at him giggling. He's, look at him. Look at him laughing. That's so funny because I got a letter here uh, from, uh, who was it from? Um, Mike Hill, who sent me a little picture of a little Japanese fella, fella from a film who said looks like me, and he does a little bit. Um, but he says, please can you make Carl laugh? I've never heard him utter as much as a snigger, and I'm worried he may have a genetic disorder. Well, I mean, he has got a genetic <laughs> disorder, yeah. obviously. But, um, he was giggling then. I hope, I hope, uh, oh, people heard you then. Look at his little face. It was a joy. Oh, just, I love the things that make him happy. But I love the fact just before the, uh, the the microphone came up and just before the record finished, he had his headphones on. The music was too loud, and he was just shouting, "Bowhouse, it's not working! <laughs> Bowhouse, it's not working! I have to play something else." I went and found Ziggy Stardust by Bowhouse. Listen, why isn't it working? Look at him giggling. Look, he's lost it. Is he? Is he going away? Is he? Are you on drugs, Carl? What have you done? He's, he's tickled. Look at his little. Run. He looks like one of those shaved monkeys. Look yeah. at his little bit. Oh my god, I've never seen a forehead glow. I know, it's extraordinary. Oh. And he's got that red shirt on as well, so the whole whole of him is just a big glowing... Carl, what are you trying? What are you putting in? Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. Go on then. Hang on. Brilliant radio. Just, Dr. Fo I hope Dr. Fox is listening, because I think he's eating his words right now, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> right, I, I think I've done it. Right. Well done. That's excellent. Right, what what, what Let's play doing? Bauhaus now and let's try and compose ourselves. This is Ziggy Stardust by Bauhaus. <laughs> it worked, that worked, didn't it? So you panic over, calm, calm now, calm now. You are early soon, aren't you? Yeah. He's got. You got to go off early. Well, about about uh, about. How many holidays have you had? Because I only ever have time off when I'm working, like doing another job, like you know, filming or something. But you seem to have a lot of holidays. Just like, and you were sick as well. You were just like because you had wet trousers, which is a little bit. Do you do you not care about the job? I mean, I've got to ask because. You know what I mean? If I was in charge, I'd worry about your motivation or... Because we... Yesterday, we were trying to work out what you enjoyed doing. And we got to, uh, Manchester United and moaning. And that is, that is the two we came I, up I with. I don't know where you get the moaning thing You're from. always whinging. About what? Everything. What, when? When did I last have a moan? Uh, just before we came on air. Right, and why was that? Um, I don't know, I can't remember. Because well, we I'll, were in good mood. We were in a good mood, me and Rick. I'll tell you why. Go on. Because you brought a song in at ten to one. Yeah. With a load of effing and jeffing in it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and saying, "Can you edit this?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's your job. You could have brought it in yesterday. No, I couldn't. Why not? I hadn't thought of it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but why? But why? But why are you whinging? That's your job. And I didn't come in ten minutes before. It was a good twenty minutes before. It just took you ages because you were whinging and moaning mm. to even get started. I'm not, I'm not being dragged into this. You are always. I'm on the holiday now. Well, not yet. No, you're not on yet. You're still working. <laughs> well, this, this, that's what's funny. This isn't even work, right? And yet it should be. Compared to what I do in the week, this is a doddle. <laughs> well, it's because you're not putting any effort in, clearly. <laughs> Where are you going, anyway? Where are you heading? Cornwall. Yeah? What's happening down there? Uh, well, there's a monkey world. <laughs> <laughs> you're excited about that. We don't, we don't see that. Probably go twice to that. Yeah. Whilst I'm down there. How long are you waiting for? Do the whole week? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... This is with your parents, isn't it? Yeah. Taking yeah. them out, taking them out. Your father, yeah. What do you think your father be up to? What's, what's he going to be nicking on this holiday? Well, tin. Uh, There's a lot of tin in Cornwall. He's, since uh, they've shut the mines. <laughs> he's, uh, he's just called Suzanne, said they've got there, said it's a nice little place. Mm -hmm. uh, There'll be we. no towels when you get there. <laughs> 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 so no, what do you do? Balls. What are you going to do? Just going to chill out and sort of like go to the pub and stuff? Yeah, like I say, I mean, all I've got planned is probably the, uh, probably Tuesday and Thursday at Monkey World. <laughs> Um <laughs> what, what, what about Wednesday? What, what, what do you think of Wednesday? Just wand wandering around? Just sort of think about, you know... What King Arthur and that. Uh, where, where, he was down there, wasn't he? I don't know, but I'll tell you going? something. What town? I, I don't know, I don't know where it is. Doesn't doesn't matter, doesn't yeah, she's sort of down. I, I, I joined the phone to her saying, well pack them, pack two pairs. Poor woman, she's packing your bags for you. Yeah. Right. But, uh... You'd, you'd, you'd spend more time at home if Steve didn't come in at 10-2 with a rap record with, like, obscenities all over it. Yeah, well, we'll play that next week. Then. Well, you didn't even get the job done, that's the thing. We can't even play it because you didn't get finishing time. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, that method man, if he doesn't stop effing and jeffing, it's the end of his career. <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> All this F that and, uh, uh <laughs> yo, 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 yo Jeff, I'm a Jeff myself. Yeah. Or, or I'm, I'm hanging out with my Jeffs. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> Jeff, and, you. And we know you can't put out the J word. 
on, yeah. on XFM. Oh, Mother Jeffer. Well, <laughs> so we haven't got that, but what we have got... Go on. Monkey News. They've still got a Monkey News, have we? That's sorted out, that's coming up. Yeah. Rockbusters. Yeah. Well, last chance. They're definitely your last chance this time. You, you actually improved a little bit last week, you did a couple of good ones. Yeah, yeah. Same again this week. And, uh... Cheeky Freak? The controversial yeah. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Where Carl, um, finds, uh, a, a human being with, um, some sort of, uh, congenital or, or uh, you know, um, imposed deformity, <coughs> or, you know. So, uh, and we talk about that in a, in a wry way. Do you think that, do you think that's big and clever? No, but that's, that's just it. It's never about taking the mickey out of someone, right? It's about, it's to make you think... I'll tell you what isn't big and clever. How lucky you are. A dwarf right? with learning difficulties. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well... <laughs> well, uh, end of the 70s Bowie. Mm, that's that was great. great. On XFM 104.9. That's just some of the records that we've played so far. Do you know what I mean? You've had The Darkness, you've had Bauhaus. It, it, it's like, can it get any better, Carl, do you think? Like I say, we've got monkey news coming up. <laughs> 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 Guess what? I lost 400 quid cash this week. Gambling? No. No, no, this, that's tragic. Uh, that, this is why it gutted me. It wasn't um, even on your gambling No, I, I had, uh, I had a photo shoot, I had a suit, right, and I'd, I'd claimed back some expenses, and I'd, I'd had it in my pocket. And then when I took the suit home, it must have fallen out in the street or the cab, <sighs> and I remembered it, and, and I went to the, I went every pocket twice. And it was just the fact, I don't think about, oh god, that's terrible, that's a terrible blow, I think, Oh God! If I had it back now, it would be free money. Yeah. If I suddenly found it now, I'd have four hundred pounds that was just free money, and yeah. I had a little nap to get over it, and I was. <laughs> and you were fine. I was okay, but that was good. Four hundred pounds. Someone just but... found what a gift that is. Oh. Just, I mean, it, was it in a money clip? Was it rolled no, up in a money clip? No, it was just literally four hundred quid in an envelope. Oh, and that's so a that, treat. I know. Uh, see, I'd always hand it in. I genuinely would, unless I found it in a in the middle of a forest or something, <laughs> it was in the street. Do you know what I mean, though? Because a bear dropped it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, if I found it in a pub or a cab, I'd just hand yeah, it to anyone who was in. through. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But we'd, I'd hand it in. Well, I, I um, But there's no way, if they found it in the street, there's no way they could do it. You know, it goes to the police station and it sits there for six months, but... Yeah, exactly. Well, it's not, it's a waste of time. Pocket it. But, um... I, because when I was younger, I remember being outside a post office once when I was about ten or twelve, and finding a purse, and thinking, oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I opened it up, and there was some money in there, and a pension book, and so it was obviously an old lady, I, had an, I found an address, I sent it to her, and my mum said, you know, you've been so good there, you'll probably get a little reward. She'll probably send you a little reward. Nothing! I got maybe a thank you note, but no cash, no Mulan, nothing. Really? And I was livid, because I'd been told that I was going to get a reward, I thought I've been a good Samaritan, nothing. So, many moons later, when I was at university, I learnt from that, and I, and this is, this is the most bizarre thing. It this was explains like, a lot, doesn't it, Carl? This mm. is like the Mary Celeste. I went to uh, a cash point to put my, I thought, I can't get my card in here. And I realised there was already somebody's card in the machine, they put the code in, but, um, <sighs> but they, they, but the, then they just disappeared, they'd been kidnapped or something, so it was just there, waiting, sitting, said, what do you want to do? And it gave you a number of options. I thought, interesting. Steal? Or go to <laughs> yeah, heaven? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He went, oh dear, um. Yeah. <laughs> well, um. I pressed, uh, balance, just to check what their bank balance was. Unbelievable. It was a considerable sum of money. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was not typical student debt. It was like, I think they were a foreign student, there was a lot of cash in there, a lot of Did money. Did you feel a slight bulge in your trousers when you saw the amount of money? I couldn't believe my luck. <laughs> I thought to myself, <laughs> now then, I could just take that card out and hand it in, or I could teach them a small lesson. Right. And maybe give myself a reward because last time I did that, I didn't yeah. get a reward. So if I give myself thirty pounds, mm. then I'll take the car now. Thirty. Give myself thirty. Yeah. You didn't really. Pounds. Well, I thought that's a good reward, and I and I went in, I handed the card in, I took Steve, that Steve, and that's, that's a little reward for me. And I'll tell you this: don't think it's evil because I went in, I bought everyone a drink. Uh, well, brilliant. Yeah, I didn't yeah. tell them I got the money free. Well done. Excellent. So, so I, I, probably gangsters are quite generous. With well, the money they've stolen from other people. Yes, but someone's negligence, Rick, has lent. The, the, well, the thing is this, Steve. Right? I, do, I, I I believe it, except the buying people a drink, Carl. What do you think? Well, <laughs> I kind of thought that when he said it, but then I thought, but they'll be buying one him back. So he's still that. So in a way, he's still a winner. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's a winner in that situation, including the student, because frankly, if there had been a, a less scrupulous person who found it, they'd have probably helped themselves to a considerable sum. I cannot believe he did that. There was thousands and but thousands if, of pounds in there. What if it was, uh, what if Beadler jumped out and slapped you with his little claw 
and said, we've been filming this, Merchant. Well, what, so what? How old were you then? I don't know, 19, 20. Would you do it again, or was it just to get the world back for the old lady's purse? Um, possibly do it again, yeah. You're, jo you're joking! Well, you've got to think of it this way, you've got to think of it as there was a lot of money in there, and someone less scrupulous than me would have taken a fortune. They'd have cleaned them out. Whereas I just took a small reward, which I thought was more than enough for someone's negligence. <laughs> and I've returned the card, they've got the card back, everything's fine. Think okay. of someone else, I could have gone on a spending spree, I could have been buying stuff, all sorts. Yeah, but it wasn't yours at all. Yes, it but it's, they probably would have given me a reward. And because, you know, sometimes people forget or, you know, they don't give you a reward, I thought I should he take it myself. You had to go your dad from nicking a loaf of bread out of a phone box. Yeah, but that's because it's for old people, geriatrics and stuff. How do you know how old was your people you were robbing from? It's it a student, it was on a student hungry. campus. Mm. Mm. Wow. I think it was more, I thought it was excellent behaviour. God, that's good incredible. That, that is, that's showing another side to him, isn't it? What would you have done, Carl, in that situation? And tell the truth. I, I might have helped myself a little bit. I, there you are! I don't there you know are. what this is helping no, yourself a bit! Like you say, just sort of, you know, stand at him back and sort of say, you know... If you find a pound coin in the street and you can be bothered to bend over for it, then have it. But someone's cash point card or, uh, personal belongings... I'd let them know though, did you send it to them and say, I've, I've you know, I've service charge included, I've <laughs> sort of took that out already. <laughs> no, I gave, I handed it in to <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> What do you mean you'd let them know? I'd, I'd say, you know, uh, you're lucky here, eh? right? I just took, uh, I'd probably said 20, actually, because okay. that's just like one note. Sorry, you, sure. sorry, right, okay. You are winding me up. No, no, I'm not. I mean, not for, for once. I mean, I, I know what Steve's like, he is tight, <laughs> right? He's, well. he's, he, no, he is. <laughs> and you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not, you're not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful. Absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. <laughs> not at all to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look come after on, the pennies, the pains will take care of themselves. Alright? <sighs> Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, Alright? Yeah, the thing is, right, um, I know that I take the mickey out of you for like, you know, the way you look and stuff. <laughs> sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. <laughs> but the thing is, you can't help that. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not- I'm not frugal with money with ladies. I'm frugal with money with you. <laughs> well, I've I- have got no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never been out with me. Have you ever- have, Steve, have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Play a record. Peter Vase, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Talking of money, Steve. L look at this, right? It's in the paper. A wife has had her beauty insured for a hundred thousand pound in case she grows ugly and her husband walks out. Uh, Nicole Jones, 26, of Chipping Sodbury, Gloucestershire, says two hundred pounds a year, that's why it pays two hundred pounds a year for a policy. She arranged it, um, as a present for her husband Richard. Her beauty will be judged by a panel of builders. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> have they been selected beforehand? Do you think? Do they I don't know. know who they are. I but assume I they're mean, complete I, strangers. So, suppose like in thirty years' time, he looks at her and goes, "Oh, you've lost your looks." She goes, "Well, have I?" Yeah. He goes, well, yeah. <laughs> well, have I? They call in the panel. Some girls come in. <laughs> Yes. All right, get him out for that. Well, never mind that. It's your, yeah, she's lost it. Right, well, hundred grand. Well, they, hundred grand coming your way. They stand on some scaffolding. Yeah, she <laughs> walks by. Yeah, and if they will whistle, that is amazing. Uh, do you think they give her a quote first? Yeah, what if they say, actually, love, you've got nothing to lose, you're not, you're yeah. not, you're not an oil painting anyway. Yeah, we can't come round and judge your beauty for at least I mean, weeks. that is just open to abuse, isn't yeah. it, a hundred thousand pounds? Because I remember, um, uh, in, in Japan, uh, they're mad on golf, right? And if you get a hole in one, you buy everyone, you throw a party, and it was costing them, like, thousands and thousands of pounds. So they were insuring themselves, against getting a hole in one, and so miraculously, <laughs> everyone was going, I've got a hole in one, did he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Paying out insurance. I mean, they, they, they could be in that together, couldn't they? It's they're bizarre. not, I'm sure they're not. Well, they're she, they're yeah. probably more honest than you two that would take 20 quid out of a cash point. But, you know. No, 30. 30. <laughs> yeah, 30. Uh, the, it's, I like the wording, though. A wife. Yeah, a wife. The word wife. <laughs> the word wife. It's a, I don't know why it makes, I, I just find it's just an odd word. This is, hello, this is my wife. Hello, uh, the wife. Yeah, the wife. 
My wife. It just seems a word that you have to say if you're 60. You yeah, go, I know. Have you met the wife? And even then, ironically, unless someone, you don't know exactly, are you married? Yeah, um, my wife is from, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that makes sense, but it's but the people wife. Go, people go, oh, better get back, I'm meeting the wife for dinner. <laughs> but especially right. when you know well, them. I, I, uh, yeah, I remember bumming into someone, a friend of mine, in, uh, somewhere at a party, to a couple that I knew, and I'd known both of them before they got married. In fact, I'd known her, I think, longer. And he and I said, da, 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 where's son? So, and, uh, and he went, oh, well, uh, the wife will be along in a minute. And it's just this notion that, but what, you use her name. <laughs> I know, I know she I is. I know she is, I know <laughs> her name. <laughs> is that well, I used to call her by that, the wife. It's like someone going, you know I'm married. Yeah, you know, exactly. you know I'm married. It's in like the, showing In the off. eyes of God, we are wed. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, so that makes me more of an of, adult than it's you. It's the ownership, yeah, it's like going, you know I'm a real man. I've yeah. got a wife, and here she is. She's uh, my wife. I find it, there's the words that I, f I find hard to say. <laughs> Um, in a shop, I could never ask for wet ones. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If I if I have to go and ask for wet ones, I won't bother. Or toilet duck. Another one I probably like I never say Snickers. <laughs> Why? Don't know. I think it's like I grew up with Marathon. Yeah. See, I still this is so pathetic. I still get embarrassed buying uh, toilet paper. Really? You know, if you go into like a tw twenty four hour shop just around the corner, not a supermarket, big shop, but if you just go in there, and you're just maybe buying some milk. Yeah. A chocolate bar. Because it's like they know what you're up to. No. They, no, they, but they know you're going to use it to, you know, when you're, you're going to the lavatory at some point. It's sort of, it's too intimate. But you, exactly, you just go, I know what you're thinking, <laughs> I'll be using this after masturbation. <laughs> 104.9, a retro cut. Indeed. Well, up to the modern day, the newest game show around, Rockbusters. Whee! Isn't there a jingle? It would probably be something like, oh... Rockbusters. It would be very, <laughs> along yeah, those along lines. those lines. I've got to work it out, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go without it for now and then okay. there'll be one ready next week. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the prizes, once again, sourced by Carl Pilkington. I think it's, um, been in the prize bag before, Carl, but I could see it back. The best air guitar <laughs> album in the world ever. Do they uh, keep sending it back? Is that just one? <laughs> is that, is it, it comes through the window, tied to a brick. Uh, actually, there's a lot of good stuff on there. There's, uh, the kink. Knopfler? Is there Knopfler? Knopfler, I believe, is on it's there. It's clapped in anywhere to be seen. Definitely clapped. So I would have thought per a deep purple. We got Quo, Skinnerd, Mac, uh, Snake <laughs> is there, Straits, excellent. And uh, yeah. yeah, there's all sorts on there, obviously. Yeah. Um, this is always an odd choice, but fair enough. This is the uh, current album by the Yardbirds, <laughs> their first studio album in 35 years. So uh, the new music station XFM giving away that. It's nice because it's new music in, in, in some ways. Um, a smash hits compilation. We got stuff on there. It's uh, uh it's Curiosity Killed the Cat. It's all the uh, the old favourites. Plus two DVDs. Uh, Columbo. What which, Columbo? Uh, it's got a couple of classic Columbo episodes there. Suitable for framing. One of the best um, TV programs of all time. Why do I get? You can always tell immediately who the villains are. Suitable for framing. I'm assuming that's some kind of art dealer. Yeah. Maybe an artist. Candidate for crime. Presumably some kind of um, presidential political, or yeah. political candidate. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, that'd be good, I'm sure, Columbo. I mean, Stab Woman. <laughs> that was my <laughs> yeah. favourite episode. St stab Lady Wife. I mean, to be fair, I'm not sure why... Who would buy a Columbo DVD? Like, you can't find it on TV. It's on now. Like, it's on now. <laughs> it's on now. I guarantee... Because someone could maybe uh, email in. Is there an episode of Columbo on now anywhere that got cable or digital? I think it will <laughs> Almost be. Almost certainly. But it is great. And the other uh, DVD here is Cruise of the Gods, which was the um, the one-off TV kind of film, comedy film that was on at Christmas, featuring Rob Brydon and Steve Bryden, Coogan. Coogan. Uh, uh, it's good. So, uh, yeah, there's a few gifts there. Not not, not bad, not bad right, at all. Right, now we get to the, uh, <laughs> to to the, the real deal. deal. Okay, this is this, this, this what everyone tunes in for. This is Monkey News, I think. Not, right, not, well, not the music. Um, go on. Well, here we go, then. Yeah. Three uh, cryptic clues and well, that. And it's not really out. cryptic, but... Easy as that. Email well, in. It's, uh, yeah. Email in. Right. Well, what's the email address? Ricky.gervais at exfm.co.uk. Well, don't say that I know it or care. I think, yeah. So the first one, uh, he's got American coins all down his spine. <laughs> right? <laughs> he's got American coins all down his spine. What, what band's that? What artist is it? What email it, in. What does it begin with? What? N. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, I've got it already. Right, That's then, rubbish, too easy. Yeah, right, go on next. Second one, Jeremy Beadle uh, has got arthritis. Right, Jeremy Beadle has got arthritis. Yeah. That's the second clue, the uh, initials there, SLF. Right, SLF. Jeremy Beadle's uh, got a little bit of arthritis. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the third one, uh, Foxy Shipman 
and a country western singer on a merry-go-round. S.D. Right? So Foxy Shipman and some country western singer having a go on a merry-go-round. The initial S.D. Right? So email in. <laughs> Ricky Dot <laughs> I'm intrigued with that one. I'm genuinely intrigued with that one. I'm I like the fact there's a certain whiff of controversy about it. <laughs> because shit mud is mentioned. I know, yeah. Oh, A little dear. bit edgy, that. So, uh, that's, that's the three. He's from your neck of the woods, isn't he, as well, Shipman? Yeah. Yeah. I think my mum's mum used to use him. <laughs> okay, let's play a record. Well. You want to play a record or play some adverts for your fancy some ads? Oh, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather add adverts, yeah. I've got some yeah, for you. Excellent. Placebo, this picture on XFM 104.9. Steve. Yes. I think, uh, Carl's gonna put most people to shame. We were talking about generosity earlier. Because Carl is a nice, generous bloke when it, when it really comes to it. He's paying for Father's Day. He's paying for the cottage that he's going away with his dad. Are you really, Carl? Yeah. Right. Well, there's no way of us proving if that's true or not. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> well, you could be lying. <laughs> but why would I do that? Well, because you want to show off. I didn't do it on air, you mentioned it. <laughs> I don't want people to know how generous I am. <laughs> I just... <laughs> right, just do it, just get on with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Look, look yeah. charity work in that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Do you, do you, do, but I, I'd have thought that you wouldn't have fallen for Father's Day. I'd have thought you'd have known that it was like... Well, we don't. I mean, to be honest, it's a bit of a coincidence, because I paid yeah. for it anyway and it's happened to fall on... Right. On Father's Day, mm. right? Don't buy a card. Don't, that don't, don't fall for it. It, it. I mean, obviously that and Mother's Day, and a plethora of other things were. I mean, literally invented mm. by card companies to make more money. I know. Uh, yeah. That's that's that's. Uh, I mean, my dad always says, "Don't don't get him a card or anything," because um, he hates it with all these things that I'd like. You know, rip off times really, just ripping people off. Yeah. Um, so it sounds, sounds a bit stingy, though. Well, no, no, I mean, he's right. Yeah. He's right, it's just, uh, because fellas aren't bothered about getting cards anyway, are they? <laughs> but the the other thing that he noticed, um, you know, helping out the flower companies, the Princess Diana thing, when she- Oh, f- Sorry. Yeah. No. Jesus. Cry- Carl. So when, yeah, when- Carl, when, what, what, what do you mean? What no, do you mean? That's, that's what he said, he said, oh- I nearly it. swore then, because I was, uh, you surprised me all the time. No, no, But just, that is incredible. Sorry, what- I don't understand what you're talking about. All the about. flowers that were sort of sold that day. Right. What, right. for people to leave as a commemoration or Yeah, they, they, they made a- made a mint, didn't they? Who did? Flower companies. Right, so what so are you, you saying? saying so you're he saying- So just saying, you know, makes you wonder. <laughs> well, whether- About what? Whether it was in the floor or behind the hit. Oh. So it's a conspiracy? <laughs> It's a conspiracy by the flower companies. I would love to see you and your dad just sitting at home watching a bit of Channel 5 when apes go mental, right, with your- with your roast when's dinner. When's that on? When's that on? <laughs> <laughs> and then talking like, well, yeah, well, you know, you know, kill Diana, don't you? Flower company's son. Right, 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 quite right, Dad, you're not wrong. What are you talking about? No, I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm just saying, it's, it's like you were saying about the cards. <laughs> You know, on Father's Day and that, it's, it's, it's just a bit, too much a bit of a weird. Too much of a coincidence. I'd be interested to see sort of, you know, like the business graph. Sure. <laughs> yeah. On how the companies were doing, then suddenly. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> yeah. But then, but then by the same token, uh, Elton John, you know, he started the biggest selling hit record, didn't he, off the back of that? Mm. I mean, so, is he incriminated as well? If you want, I mean. <laughs> 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 We'll it's a conspiracy there, theory you've not kind of analysed terribly closely. You've put it out there, and if people maybe who are investigating want to kind of add that into their inquiries, then they can. Yeah, sure. But uh, no, that's 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 all I'm saying. I'm just you know, because it's always the same thing, isn't it? Like I was out <laughs> shopping the other day, uh, you know, treating Suzanne like I do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I like I like spending money and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was in W. H. Smiths. Yeah. Um, oh, classy. Yeah. The, what was, the, it? Uh, was it? Was it a big birthday? Was <laughs> it? <laughs> you, you, was, it a thir- was it a 30th? No, I was, I was getting a, uh, <laughs> Was it two biros for the price of one? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting, I was getting a card for my dad for Father's Day anyway, because yeah. I'm yeah. seeing him. Yeah. Uh, big Toblerone. Yeah. There was a who, is it, who, who is it who said Father's Day? They love a, love a Toblerone. I've never understood Toblerone, because the only time I see Toblerone is in airports. Yeah. Right? And mini bars. Mm. <laughs> that yeah. is what the the, the the small Toblerone is for the mini bar in a hotel. Yeah. 
three star upwards. Mm. And the big Toblerone. Well, it's the big Toblerone is, is a gift, isn't it? It can uh, only be a gift. You wouldn't uh, buy a big Toblerone you, for yourself. Uh, yeah, a duty free gift. The Toblerone. It's next to, um, you know, uh, Chanel number no. five, Toblerone. <laughs> yeah. And a bear. <laughs> but it's, who specifically yeah. would you be buying that Toblerone for? I don't know. Someone who's clearly never had it before and would think it was an interesting novelty. It, uh, yeah. Well, this uh, gift's interesting. I'll tell you what, though, Toblerone is brilliant. I mean, if, if whoever makes that, if they want to send sort of, you know, some Toblerones, I, I mean, I, I will eat Toblerone. Well, yeah. I think very much the and, same uh, about, um, I think very much the same about fags. And of course- just cigarettes. If you've got any boxes of cigarettes and, uh, that you don't want, <laughs> yeah. you know, duty free or whatever, I, send them. I'd just like to say that, uh, d in no way do, do, do I endorse <laughs> Carl's dad's theory that flower companies will hide the death of Diana. No, well, well, Maybe I could say that on air as well, just to save any complaints. I'll tell you what though, <laughs> talking about fag packets and that, do you know, like now, They've got, uh, they've got, if you have these, they'll do you in, sort of thing, yeah, on yeah. the front now. They've got these special stickers on them. Yeah. I saw a thing in a magazine the other day, in Brazil, <laughs> it's got, like, pictures of ill people on them. Blimey. That is They've gone really, uh, hardcore over there. That's good, isn't it? But, I mean, uh, to be fair, what more can they do? I mean, there are fag packets now that say, these will kill you, and people are still smoking them. I mean, yeah. I don't know what they. C I don't think it, I don't think the message well, is getting through. You could ban them all together, I suppose. If if they, it, it, it seems weird to uh, sort of like you must sell guns and go careful. You can kill people yeah. with these. Well, ban them then. Wow, just be <laughs> careful. Let's shoot your eye out with that. This is poison. This is poison. These are really, really mental poison drugs. You know those people with the. You ever see them in the street? Uh, they're selling fags, duty free, obviously. They're just selling on the street. You know, have you ever seen these guys? Yeah, like, yeah. I walk up and they finish your road lock because yeah. I'm just near my place. And, uh, all these people, they're just, and they're sort of looking a bit shifty and then they just, they think that you're maybe a smoker. They just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, fags. And they'll open their jacket and it literally will be like something from, you know, the 1940s. They won't they'll go have... to you though, do they? Yeah, smoking. It's dungeon growth. growth. They know you well, must have never had a fag in your life. Um, but you know, I might be buying them as a gift or something because I'm quite a generous guy. <laughs> 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 and, but it struck me, I was chatting with my friend about, you know, there seems to be, there are certain people who are very, uh, maybe they, they, they have trouble getting work, or maybe they, um, you know, they're, they're immigrants who've not landed on their feet and they've, they, they've had trouble, you know, and so there's a couple of jobs they can do, it seems to be there's the fag selling, there's those people I know it's on Oxford Street who bend a piece of wire into the shape of your name. I mean, what kind of a gift is that, really? You know what I mean? I know. It's like, oh, they're, like they're literally giving them out. Or you can de- well, you can have the, the bending the name, you can be selling those things that you throw what? at the wall and they, they sliver down. At Dover? Yeah. What, they, what, they are, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, what are you I'm doing? a, I'm a, uh, trained carpenter. Right. You can you write really small on a piece of rice? I could try. Could you write those names on a piece of rice? I could try. It's quite tricky, but do what you think about, you What about it? the rest of your family? <laughs> well, that one's only two, but he could be trained. He's got smaller fingers. Okay. Do you want to, um, to sell some knocked off perfume? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Again, we'd like to apologise for any <laughs> inadvertent racism, suggestion that Lady Diana was killed by flower companies, or that Steve makes a habit of stealing from cash points. What about... XFM 104.9. A picture of Rick Waller on the front of the bargain bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers, universally speaking, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant, and, of course, Carl Pilkington. Now, people come up to me, and I say, is Carl for real? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, they want to say, is he that stupid? And the answer is yes, right? Some people think that he's putting on. Some people think that he's a character that we've invented, yeah. like we've got an actor in, like he's a Gareth Keenan or a Tim or yeah. something, and I go- That no, we've scripted. He exactly, yeah. No, he's absolutely real, aren't you, Carl? I go, where did he come from? Well, just to tell the story, we came here and well, I, I was much too important to run the desk myself this time round, so they just gave us a Steve, team boy. Steve came in with you, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do you remember that? Well, it, Steve knows. I don't want to keep going over it, but no, it's sure. just the way he looks. It's just. <laughs> <great>. <laughs> yeah. Were you taken aback? A little bit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, right. And, uh, and he's just developed into my favourite thing. I also said that you get bored with, like, you know, battling tops or, you know, pets sometimes. I mean, I love, I love my cat, but he's not as, you know, Colin, my cat. Yeah. Colin, Colin. Actually, um, Carl's away next week, is he available to run the day? <laughs> no, well he's not as, he's actually not as intelligent as Carl, and that's the truth, he's not, you know. Well, he's, marginally. Yeah, but, um, 
But, uh, and then in the week, he's like one of his little Tamagotchi toys, Carl, because I have to phone him every day and keep his interest up. Yeah. Like I'd give him an interesting fact. And, um, I got a book out and I found out that I'd call Carl like that. And I thought this was a great fact, right? Um, a two-day-old gazelle can run faster than a racehorse. Right? I thought that was incredible. Sure. Okay. So I phoned him and I said, a two-day-old gazelle can run faster than a racehorse. He went, what's it do after that? I went, what? He said, well, how fast can it run when it's adult? I went, well, even faster. He went, oh. I thought we could just do it then, but then it sort of lost it. I went, what are you talking about? I went, you know, that's incredible. A two-day-old gazelle can run for- He went, well, no, that's what they do. I went, what? He went, that's what they do, isn't it? I went, what do you mean? It's two days old. Right? He went, yeah, but a one-day-old fly can fly. I'm 30 and I can't fly. It's not <laughs> yeah. what I do. Right? And I went, right. He went, a jellyfish can hold its breath underwater for hours. I went, it doesn't hold its breath, does it? It hasn't got lungs. So he went, what? I know I had him. He went, what do you mean? I said, well, they don't breathe, do they? I went, what do they do? I went, well, they get oxygen directly from the water by osmosis straight into their cells. And it just went quiet. And I went, a two-day-old gazelle. And he went, yeah. Yeah. I, do you know what I mean? Interesting I, about the jellyfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know. He, was, he was looking up osmosis, <laughs> and then he was thinking about the jellyfish. But I just think, I mean, if Bam is anything to go by, this little gazelle spends a whole day trying to stand, and the next day it enters the derby. And you don't <laughs> think that's amazing. you don't think that's incredible? Yeah. See, I thought, you know the sort of things I find incredible. Go on. Um, mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny ah, objects. Kettles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Well, uh, listen, listen. Remember the time when I tell you about the ba the uh, baby that had a baby? The well, baby that had a baby. The baby that had a baby. <laughs> yeah, it's happened again. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Well, it, it didn't happen in, the first time. It was in the papers, I think, on uh, on Monday. In all the uh, tabloids. So it's a twin where w one has 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 grown and the other one is still at a fetal level. No, it wasn't. It? Though it had grown. He was saying to his mum. Uh, Who was saying to his mum? The little kid. He was seven years old. And he kept he? saying, yeah. yeah he was and he was pregnant? Yeah. I know. <laughs> what do you mean? And, uh, he was saying to his mum, oh, God, I don't feel well. And, like, his belly was all swollen, and they thought he'd just been eating cake or whatever. And, uh, he was saying, I can feel something moving about. And they were like, stop messing about. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, eventually, I think he was in gym at school. In gym? What, gym <laughs> was pregnant with him? <laughs> oh, was, no, he was, he was like at, a Russian he, doll. He was at, he was at school, right? Just about to do, uh, sit-ups or whatever they do at school, right? Yeah. And, uh, Flew out across the room. teacher goes, you're a bit fat. You look a bit pregnant. And, uh, so best teacher, the doctors took him, said, uh, you're seven years pregnant or something like that. What are you doing? <laughs> <So, yeah. laughs> what, 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 or something like that? No, you're no, no, seven no. years pregnant. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> you sit in the doctor. <laughs> Go! Why don't you think well, about what you say before you say it? See, see the reaction I get. Now the gazelle, I didn't get excited like that. <laughs> <laughs> seven years pregnant. Send it in. If someone's online at the moment, just having a look around, it'll be on, it'll be, it happened on Monday or Tuesday. Cause I told you at the pub quiz, didn't I Steve? I said but to I don't, you, you, I know you, the baby's had a baby. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, whatever. Well, I just thought you were talking nonsense as ever. Well, we'll find out. You're probably. seven yeah. years pregnant. Yeah. You're a fool. Play a record. Well, we've still got stuff coming up. Monkey news? Rockbusters answers. We'll have to yeah. get that out of the way soon, cause we've got well, to get out Have we got a cheeky freak of the week? On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, and I understand I'm about to read my words, Steve. Well, once again, there's always someone, and uh, it looks like it's Mike Lamb who it has come to Carl's La rescue. Lambo's let me down, then. Doctors have removed a four-pound baby boy from the stomach of his seven-year-old twin brother. Yeah. Alan well, Jan so, so, yeah, twin brother, was yeah. born with the freak fetus growing inside him. For seven years, it lived like a parasite until a school doctor became alarmed about Alan Jan's bulging tummy and took him to hospital. Surgeons who gave him a scan operated immediately, unaware that the baby was attached to the boy's blood vessels and still alive. They saved Alan Jan from certain death, but knew the eight-inch fetus was doomed. So there we are. Um, boy pregnant with his own twin brother by Barbara Davis. That was in the mirror, apparently. So, uh, I've read on and all the facts are right. They, they took him to the school, the parents uh, didn't realise. And that isn't even, uh, this week's Freak of the Week. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, that's you got still that to come. Free. You've got that, you can have that. <laughs> that's the Free Freak of the Week. <laughs> free Freak that, of the Week. You know, that's giveaway, that's like 13.5% extra. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you might get with hairspray or something. So that, I mean, if that's, if that's just the throwaway Freak of the Week, the two Freaks of the Weeks, there. If that's, if those two figure, I can't wait to see what the actual freak of the week is that people are paying for. Mm. Is it incredible, Carl? I'll tell you what, something else you can have for free. Go on. Uh, 
another sort of freaky thing, right? I was watching this, uh, this program in the week. Right? What? Uh, I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it is, it, it was about, uh, I just saw, saw this little fella on it, right? What do you and, mean little uh, fella? He, he was doing this history thing. Oh. Right? Yeah, I know what you mean. I, no. So, is this that he's found out that a Viking was a bit like him? Yeah, that's it, yeah. D he was boneless or something, or he's- uh, Well, that's, that's but, the weird thing. What do you think of that, Steve? He's what? He's boneless? No, he was called Harry the Boneless or something. Yeah, and, but you uh, know what you're gonna get there, don't you? <laughs> that's what I mean, I always have a- have a name, <laughs> Elephant Man, you know. <laughs> Harry the- Harry the Boneless. <laughs> Where is he? Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm meeting, I'm meeting someone, uh, waiter, um, what's his name? He's called Harry the Boneless. He's over there flapping around. Yeah. 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 He's over there in the bucket, having noodles. <laughs> That's what I mean. But, do you reckon you could do that? Do you reckon you could have your bones taken out? <laughs> I love talking to him! He's brilliant, he's like talking no, to asking, a five-year-old. I, I was asking Suzanne when she was watching it, and she was like, ask me later. Yeah, brilliant. She was. She wanted to know about. You what know, did you? You said you were still watching this program about history, right? About Vikings. Like that, you turned yeah. to your girlfriend and said, "Do you reckon you could have your bones taken out?" Yeah, I love that. What do you I think? mean, that's that, that is why you are my favourite. What do you thing. mean? You think you could have your bones taken out? <laughs> Firstly, why would you have your bones taken out? <laughs> if you've well, only got a small flat or something, <laughs> and there isn't much room. <laughs> yeah. Right. And what I mean is, would all your organs? Still do the stuff. No, no, they wouldn't. You'd just be mush. Listen, I tell, I teach you something now, right? The skeleton, right? Spam, yeah. Support, movement, anchorage. No, support, protection, anchorage, movement. Spam. That's what. That's what the bones do. Yeah. You couldn't stand up. You wouldn't be protected because they protect his rib cage, skull, of course, anchorage. Everything holds onto it. Every muscle is tethered to pull against something, like a crane, a pulley system, so you wouldn't be able to move at all. Uh, mm. do you know what I mean? So you'd just, you'd, you'd be in a bucket. There'd be nothing, you, well, you'd die immediately, obviously. No, you can't have your bones taken out, Carl. Um, I mean, why do you need to ask that question? Sorry, um, uh, but Boneless Bob, or whatever his name was. Oh, and Harry. Harry the Boneless. <laughs> he, he presumably <laughs> didn't have any bones, I mean, that's why he had that name, obviously. No, he did. No, he well, had, he's got the name. Yeah, exactly. No, he was just... <laughs> um, I've had an email here from Graham, old Ken Rowe. He just says, I had a dream about Carl last night. I had a dream about Carl last night. Can I sue? <laughs> I've no idea what he looks like apart from the boldness, and yet he turns up in the middle of my dream. I don't need this. It's harassment. <laughs> yeah. Um, but people are having dreams about you now, Carl. Uh, you actually, it's like you're one of the, something that cre was created by the Brothers Grimm. I, I've got, I, I had a dream, you know when you used to, people used to have anxiety dreams, they had like an exam or something like, you suddenly go to school and you realised, oh my god, you didn't have, um, uh, your trousers on, or, uh, I had an anxiety dream, I assume, we started off as an anxiety dream about the office, about filming the office, and we had to, we had to film in HMV, but someone hadn't cleared it, and so we, we had to try and an R price, and I went, oh, okay, that'll do, and as I was walking there, right, um, I didn't have any shoes on. Which is like an anxiety dream, but I looked down and I went, so what? Yeah. So I'm so lazy now, I think, <laughs> even ang anxiety dreams don't kick in to me. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a dream, that, I think that's just a memory. <laughs> I wouldn't be at all surprised if you, uh... <laughs> Turned out with the film with the yeah, with no shoes. We don't need shoes. When we were originally doing the pilot for the very first series, um... Obviously, Ricky's the main character. He's in it all the time. It's obviously important. This is our big chance to get something made for TV. You know, this could launch our careers. And, um... I turn up on the Monday, he's twisted his ankle. He has to be wheeled around in a wheelchair, because he went out jogging, stepped on a tin can in the street, and fell over. Who left that there? Like a 40-year-old man with brittle bone disease, he just <laughs> twisted his ankle and he was out of action. It was pathetic. Yeah, that was the pilot. Absolutely pathetic. But I still turned up, Carl. That's the sort of trooper I am. Well, yeah, but you moaned the whole week. Wait, wait, wait. Well... <laughs> I didn't like him to go around in a wheelchair, did I? Yeah. It's not pleasant, you know, but... In a, in a weird way, it taught me all the problems. <laughs> Do you have anxiety dreams, Carl? Do you ever lay awake worrying about stuff? Because uh, I have a lot going on in my head. Mm. Yeah, I very. I, I, I don't have. Like, <laughs> what do you do? Rent it out to people? <laughs> <laughs> Is it two monkeys swinging in a tie at the moment? Yeah, I just don't have that many dreams. No. Uh, <laughs> I love, I love that. I love that you don't have that many dreams. We well, haven't had a decent night's sleep since you were fourteen, according to you. Twelve. Really. 
Yeah, so I, I, know, I know what you meant. I know what you mean, though. Now, when sometimes you're so tired, because I'd forgotten that you're so tired, and you think, "Well, I'm so, I'm so glad I don't have to go out tonight. I'm going to go and just lay on the couch and then go to bed." Yeah. Have but, you had one, Steve? Have you? No. Anxiety dreams. I do have them periodically. Yeah, it used to be a lot of you know things like running to jet to get to school in time, but you know suddenly your feet are running in treacle and you can hear the school bell. And you I've had them for years. Well. I just haven't had an anxiety dream for years and years and years. As yeah, don't know. I just don't care. No, well, no, you just genuinely don't care about anything. This is the problem. <laughs> you, you've just got to a point now where nothing bothers you, really. It's like you're just too lazy and disinterested in anything. This show, your career, my career, Carl. <laughs> no, I've never, I never give up on Carl. So, um, Carl, so this little Harry the Boneless, what was your point? Was that, was that really your point? You wondered if you could live without bones? <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw the little fella on, on this program. And the he, presenter? He, yeah. And he was, he was the small fella, and he was talking about Harry the Boneless. And I thought, you know, that's, that's an interesting little bit of science stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's about it on him, really. <laughs> All right, well, that's just another bonus Cheeky Freak of the Week, is and it? And that's not even the Freak of the Week, either. No, 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 no. That's still to come. So you've had a pregnant, you've had a pregnant Siamese twin. Oh, uh, it's been mad, mad in You've the had freak a bonus week. fella and a, 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 another fella talking about him. They're, they're not even involved in Freak of the Week. No. This is getting mad, play record. That's yeah. So, Carl, off you go. Well, we, we, we're not gonna do, uh, Freak of the Week here. Okay. Right? Because we've, we've done... Quite a bit of that in the last twenty minutes. Right, so we'll move that. Freaks, you think? Yeah, sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I don't like to keep saying. Don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> no. Right, because we're not about that. I feel that, like I can do a little bit of it because I work with with you, Steve. Yeah. Right? <laughs> sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like that thing of. You can't be homophobic because I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. It, I think, it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right? So, so you're not freakophobic because you work with Steve? No, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay, well, well, then, think... but by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. What do you or mean? At least mentally handicapped. Now, there's a term you don't hear very often. In, in 2003, there was a <laughs> <laughs> the mentally handicap. Oh, I don't know where to start. But I, I'd I mean, like to apologise for the Lady Diana stuff, uh, <laughs> the term <laughs> mentally handicap, um, and any inadvertent racism that we may have stumbled What's over. the actual term then? <laughs> <laughs> Is it retarded? Right. right, come on now. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news, earlier than usual. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to save this link now, monkey news. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff, <laughs> right, on monkeys. Um, and most of it has been... Is uh, bollocks! No, it's been, has been like, happy stories. Oh, <laughs> is this a sad, it's not, it's just gonna be like our tune. Ah, oh, monkey tune. Uh, Simon Bates, and, uh, welcome to our monkey tune. No, but do, do you know what I mean? We've, we've done, we've done stuff about a monkey that robbed a bank. Yeah. Why uh, is that happy? He had a great life after that. Right. What, in Marbella? Yeah. Right, we did, uh, the one who, who, uh, saved someone's handbag in a railway station. <laughs> we've, uh, we've had a lovely marriage, a couple of marriages. A couple <laughs> of marriages. A couple of monkey marriages. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, there was the one... Who got a job in a railway station. Yeah, the hairdresser. The one who set up a business in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I remember, don't that, remember one. that one. I don't remember that one I'm willing to believe that that happened. Go on then, Carl. Um, but anyway, yeah, so today's isn't, isn't that, uh, isn't that happy, really. It's about, uh, some monkey, I think it was a chimp. Um. Who's an ape. Go on. It tried to... It, it, I mean, the story set us off a, a, a sort of a, a weird thing. Yeah. It's something about he, he went to Russia to do some business. <laughs> no, what are you talking about, Carl? I, I don't, it it I jumped mean, past that bit, though. It didn't start there. What are you... Do you know what I mean? It, it, it didn't tell you what he was doing. It just said, there's this monkey, went to Russia. Um, <laughs> to do some business. I know. Do some stuff. I don't know. Bit of monkey business. And, um, <laughs> anyway, didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> they were furious. <laughs> we wanted a surgeon. You send us a monkey. Um. Anyway, ended up being homeless. Oh, no, it's always taken a turn for the worst. What couldn't even get into a like, you know like a tree hostel or anything like that. 
that's 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 the problem. And, oh uh, God! Ended up, uh, yeah, ended up homeless. Got in with some uh, some tramps. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, yeah, so he's knocking about with some tramps and stuff. Um, you know, sharing drink and we'll have you around a little fire. Um, <laughs> they broke into some home. Not sort of squatted. Right, so I'm not flat. homeless anymore. Um, problem was, yeah, he had a, you know, a roof over his, uh, little area head. Yeah. And he goes, uh, oh, this is good, this is, you know, we're having a good time, this is sorting me out. Yeah. He had, he had his he mate. He said that in Russian, though. <laughs> but what is it, what, what was he eating? I don't know. Don't know, I didn't say. But they're in this house. Well, like, well, he could only be eating, sort of like, you know, fruit, nuts, vegetables that, I mean, they, they, classically, just sort of don't eat, you know, pork pies and But they've got McDonald's coffee. in Moscow now, so. Sure. He probably turned sure. it on that. Yeah. 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 Anyway, there was a bust. Um, what? This was there, was a, there was a bust in the flat that they were squatting in. All the other tramps sort of knew what was going on, legged it, left uh, little chimps out there, got arrested. And they thought it was a real fella at first. They were like, get him, you know, he's obviously just a scruffy bloke who hasn't had a shave and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hasn't shaved his back for a <laughs> yeah. while. Or his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His head. Got, yeah. Got him down the station. And, uh, the boss was like, what's going on here? We've got a monkey here. He was like, what? So you arrested a monkey. Well, so, the, uh, arresting officers hadn't noticed all the way to the station that he kept slipping out of the handcuffs mm. and was going, ah, 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 for the entire journey. They didn't notice until they got there. What, did they put a hood over his head, maybe, and just, like, bat, you know? I, I don't know. I'll, I'll give you the, uh, give you the story if you want. Uh, there's the headline. What is it? What's the headline, Steve? I don't want to see it, but... The headline, this is once again from supposedly reputable news organisation Ananova, Homeless Monkey Arrested in Russia. Uh. <laughs> did... Sorry, did you read on, or did you see the headline and make up that whole story? It's the most, most of it is there. But what isn't it. there? What what bit isn't there, then? Uh, no, I think, I think, you know, uh, Steve can have a look over it, check it out and stuff. Point out the embellishment for me, Steve, will you? What... Well, what it doesn't say is, uh, that the police didn't realise it was a monkey. That's what I was guessing. That's what I was guessing. Really. That they got it back and they said, what are you doing, we've got a monkey here? And they go, yeah? Yeah. Oh, God. There's some more, uh, monkey problems in the week. Have you seen the Alfreds advert with monkeys in? No. There's a new advert out for Alfreds, selling bikes and stuff. Yeah. Got some monkeys in it. It's yeah. caused an uproar. Why? People are saying it's, uh... You know, dressing them up in tracksuits and that is, uh... Taking the mickey out of Manchester. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not nice for the animals and that. So there's been loads of complaints about it. they get a free it. bike or something, do they, I imagine? I think they kept the tracksuits. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah Shall I record that's, that's after thing, this though. cheeky freak of the week? No, I'm just, just saying we're not doing this to sort of, again, take the mickey out of the animals and stuff. These are true stories and that. But yeah, coming next, freak of the week. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, uh... Steve Merchant and little Carl Pilkington. It's getting exciting because it's uh, his special time of the week where he gets <laughs> to talk about a cheeky freak of the week. Well, just get Robusters out of the way, right? Because I've got to, I've got to put these prizes in the post bag now because I'm shooting off. Yeah, because you've got to go early. So I don't know how you do your job. You, you went to Manchester. You went to uh, Madeira. You had a day off because your trousers were wet and you had a cold, and now you're shooting down a Cornwall, you're leaving early. How do you get your work done? You've got one job, me and Steve have got loads of things to do. I'm fast, let me work. Like I said, the prize is ready and packed up. Here. <laughs> no one's being affected by me shooting off early. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So, Rockbusters answers, got to get them out of the way a bit earlier. Right? So, here they are. First one, uh, he's got American coins all the way down his spine. Yeah. Why would that be? Right. <laughs> Initial was N. Nickelback. Nickelback. I got all these, I got all these this week. Right. Uh, second one, Jeremy Beadle has got arthritis. What, what's going on there? Stiff little fingers. SLF, stiff little fingers. Yeah. And the third one, Foxy, Shipman, and, uh... No, and a country and western singer, you said. What? Now, what's the initial? SD. Yeah, so, Spin Doctors, yeah. I got that, but, and then I said to you, why is it a country and western singer? And you said Dr. Hook. 
Why is it Dr. Hook? Why does that give the, anyone the clue, Dr. Hook? A country and western singer? It's just what, what, what was in my mind when I <laughs> <laughs> Well, there we are. There you go. So, it was changed this to Rockbusters or What Am I Thinking? You could have had Dre. What's in my mind? You could have had And The Medics. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Just think it through. Who's the winner? The winner... Very lucky, Sandra Cassidy of Leon C. She gets all those great prizes. You know, we've actually had people emailing in saying, this is the worst Rockbusters ever, because it was too easy, it was boring. Oh. Well, uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, dear. Other people saying, um, what? it really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree oh, with Oh, car, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying that oh, you, win, you whinge all the time. It looks like Steve like. was right when he, um, sort of like, poo-poos your ideas. So... When he, uh... When he wheeze on your so bonfire. Other, someone else, I swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes, take them to a charity shop, or pawn them, give me the money, I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl, I just wonder if it really has run its course now. Alright, well, well we'll see what you come up with next week, well, then. Let's, <laughs> see, let's see what you do, let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. five to one. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with another hip-hop track yeah. full of, uh, yeah. full of Effin and Jeff. Well, no, no, I, won't, I won't bring it into you, I'll do it myself at home, because obviously that makes it easier. Oh, dear. you can't cope. Oh, dear. Are you actually going to be here next week, or are you still going to be in Cornwall? No, you see, there again, I'll be back, I'll be back in time. Oh. And in the, in the week, when I go to, you know, Cornwall, to see the monkey world. Yeah, you're two days past work. the monkey world. That still work. Yeah. <laughs> still work. What? Thought what, you were going to interview monkey? some of the monkeys. I love some stories. that. I love that. You, you were going. Can a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going. Carl, shut the. F please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. And that's work, is it? Right. Right. So, are we having uh, cheeky freak of the week. Do you want to do it? What yeah. time have you got show off? Could do with shooting off sort of soonish. Okay. To be honest. <laughs> this is not radio. Have you ever heard that on a radio <laughs> show? Know, Chris Tarrant going, I can't show off a radio. I, know, I, I know. really, I, I didn't, it's I couldn't get a later train. <laughs> I know! Get, why would you get a later train? No, there isn't, there isn't a later train. So I couldn't get to Cornwall tonight if I had to. If I had to finish this show, I couldn't possibly get to Cornwall. Rubbish. Um, of course there's a later train. Oh, I've, I've, I've booked it now anyway. Right, well, that's the right. point, isn't it? Yeah. You're not right, Whatever, it. whatever. I don't think the show's lost anything. I think we've still had the, you know, Freak of the Week's coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, we've had some, uh, interesting things we've been looking at. Uh, this week, it's, uh, it's about the strangest couple that ever got married. <laughs> 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 and, I, and we've had two sets of chimps, yeah. so it's stranger than that. Oh, oh. it's not Dale Winton and Mel McAndrew, <laughs> is it? It's not your parents, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going back again to about, I think this is about 19, uh... <laughs> Something like that. 1940. Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, str important. strangest couple, a fella, right? He had skin of a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> he had the skin of a lizard, okay. <laughs> And the woman which, who we married, used as a condom. The yeah. woman who we married, yeah. uh, airiest woman ever, <laughs> right? Um, and that was their act. They used to uh, tour the world, and they'd say, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like you know, couple who've met, they're having a great life. Uh, let's get them out on stage. Here they are. <laughs> and they'd, uh, they'd what do you mean? Out. He had a skin of a lizard. First of all, that's what that's what he said. He, he had some sort of uh, some illness. So he was called Lizard Man, and you liked that because it was good description. I thought that's good. I'm here, yeah. I'm here. Hello, uh, did, did we booked a table for two? Who are you meeting? I'm meeting Lizard Man. Oh, he's over there. Yeah, you know who he is, right? Yeah, I'm Look meeting out. the hairiest woman in the world. She's over there. Yeah, yeah. So what did they do for their act? Um, now, bear in mind that we had some Siamese twins last week, and their act was having a bath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I what hope it's an improvement so, on that. Liz, what did Lizard Man? He came out and ate some flies, did he? I don't, I don't really know. I think I just think they stood there on that. Yeah, what do you, when you read this and you, it goes, the most interesting fact ever, uh, lizard man, and you go, that's enough, that's yeah, enough, yeah, well, I can that's, extrapolate from yeah, that. Well, straight away I start thinking, I'm thinking, right, I wonder if they got their wedding photos. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then, like you said, that they had a kid. Oh, what would that be like? Half exactly, lizard, exactly. half a, it'd be like an ostrich, wouldn't it? It that's, would sort of like. That's what I was thinking. What did you think it would come out like, the baby? I didn't think what that looked like, I just was thinking, oh, parents' evening. 
Do you, wanna, you wouldn't want him coming up to the school, would you? <laughs> so well, that's so little problem. Johnny, who starts off relatively normal, he's quite good at, you know, he's good at nature, yeah. isn't he? And uh, and uh, his mum and dad come into the room and they'd be looking around, wouldn't they? Well, it's always like that thing at school when, like, mm. you find out your, your mate's mum and dad are really old. <laughs> right, have you sure. ever seen that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when you go, have you, you know, your grand and granddad bought you? Yeah. yeah, yeah mum and dad, yeah. and you go, oh. It is weird. <laughs> what was that we were talking about? He calls him mum. What was that? I was like, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and no, like, that's always strange. <laughs> if you had a, if you had you know if you had Godzilla and King Kong as your parents yeah. and and, it, and they're like always say, fighting they're always fighting and and you know like you say you're in a school play or something you you wouldn't tell them would you you wouldn't no. want him coming out with the video he camera he didn't tell his parents what? he was in the when we were, well exactly you, you did little donkey and you didn't tell your dad did you and he yeah. came along and videoed it yeah was kept that it quiet kept it quiet don't want him to know anything but you did what was it it was meant to be playing you had a little drum didn't you yeah I was doing uh, I had a little drum I think it was meant to be playing We Three Kings. Yeah. But, uh, he started doing Little Donkey and I thought, I can add a touch to this. Sure, you improvised. <laughs> started playing a lot. It was like the first it, yeah. remix, wasn't it? It went, it went down well. But yeah, that's, that's all I was thinking with, uh, the Freak of the Week this week. That's, that's what I'm saying about Freak of the Week, is to get people thinking, right? Thinking how lucky they are. <laughs> that, you know, they, they don't have to... Comb their face. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? What do you mean, Freak of the Week is to let people know how lucky they are? Just... What about the little freak you're talking about? What are they thinking? They're going, oh, he's talking about me. I'm a little airy lizard man, on a stick. Pop in, give us a call. <laughs> I thought, you know, that's, that's what I'd like to do on a TV programme. That's what I want to do. I want to go and, like, meet these people and say, right, let's just go shopping, let's... You know, we'll film what your normal day's like. Yeah. Let's pop out. Gross. Nip into Sainsbury's or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, buy a comb. Park, a, park right up close to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is, is you just want to get a little message out there, which is that there's always someone worse off than you. Well, there's proof of that in this room. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh! Carl, when's your train? You know, He's on his way down to Cornwall. And he... And we're left by ourselves. Indeed. In the room. See, if we can do this... If we can press all the buttons and not make any mistakes, strictly speaking, there's no need for Carl. I don't mind if we make mistakes. Well, no, exactly. We never were in the, in the old days, No, sure, sure. Um, I think Carl is gonna love Cornwall. Because hmm. I think, one, the mayor is probably an animal. <laughs> yes. And I imagine the townsfolk think like Carl. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. imagine he'd probably he'd stay there. He'd, he'd be made king. Have you ever seen Return of the Jedi? <laughs> In yeah. Return of the Jedi, the Ewoks, the little <laughs> furry creatures, they see C-3PO, <laughs> and because he can talk and, he's, and he can speak that language, they actually elevate him oh, to he's godlike back. status. What are you doing here? Hooray! He's back. I mean, what are you uh, doing? You can stay till the end. What are you doing? Right, what are you doing? Right. Right, well there he is, he's on his way. Yeah, if, you, if you're listening online in Cornwall, I mean, like, I can't imagine that's ever going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, on, like, on a clothesline with, <laughs> with a bean tin at exactly. one end and yeah. a big bean tin in London. Or if the I'm, f I'm cool in London. Yeah, or if the foil uh, <laughs> helmet you wear <laughs> to fend off laser rays from alien terror space are somehow picking up the show, <laughs> then uh, Carl's on his way. Look forward to him. He's the Because he's got a sort of like, you know, the uh, uh, obligatory sort of red face that would mm. go well down there now. Because mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. he's been out in the sun or he was. Uh, you know, uh, pre-boiled when he came in, but he's, he's rushing down to Cornwall now, going from Paddington Station. So, yeah. uh, you know, if, if you want, if you hang in, if you're in the Paddington Station area, you want to pop down there and sort of wave him off, then do. Yeah, don't be afraid. That's not a that's not a dirty sexual act. <laughs> wave him off. Yeah, I'd love to <laughs> <laughs> wave him off. And um, call in the week as well. Um, Carl dot Pilberton XFM dot Co dot UK. Mm -hmm. Send him anything. Just clog up his email. Yeah, I mean, because he gets stressed at work. So if you can send him three or four emails each yeah over the next week so he's got to read them all but disguise them don't make them look rubbish so he's at least he's got to sort of open them and look at them or you know some of them might be correspondence so he will it's um you know just phone his uh, line as well just ask for x and ask uh, carl and leave long messages yeah. on his voicemail yeah so if if you can uh just just for us just for me and steve remember it is mine and steve's show carl is merely like you know the icing on the cake yeah if carl can come back maybe next 
Friday or Saturday or, 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 or Monday, whenever he comes back, to about 250 emails and 200 voicemail messages. If you, if you put down, when it says, uh, what's the name of the message, the title of the message, if you put monkey news or monkey information, you'll have to open it then because he'll be intrigued, even if yeah. it's not about monkeys. Yeah. Do that anyway. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, voicemail messages. Leave him long. I like this information. Disguise it. That, so it might be important. Yeah. Uh, just so he has to listen through. I wish I'd give his own mobile out, but, uh, you know, that, that is just too cruel. But anyone can get him at XFM. And, of course, we've given out his email before. So, I mean, go mental. There are plenty of ways to torture Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I mean, we've, we, we're doing all we can <laughs> on a Saturday. But we're only two people. But we're only two men. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, um, so listen, um, go, go berserk. We'll, uh, we'll be back next Saturday. I'm gonna leave with, uh, song for, song for the lovers, song, song for the for ladies, ladies, whatever. It's a beautiful track. A song for the sunshine. This is XFM 104.9. That is my favourite band at the moment. You love them? I, I absolutely love them. I think they're funny. I think they're straight down the line with a little bit of tongue in cheek. Mm. Oh, brilliant. Did you see them on Jules Holland last night? I didn't, night? sadly, no. Brilliant. Were they good? Yeah, absolutely jumped. Oh. I mean, Jules didn't know what to do. <laughs> was he, was he playing some Boogie Woogie? He, they wouldn't let him play Boogie Woogie over the song. Mean? That's what I mean. That's why he stayed back. But, I uh, can't imagine it was very good. Though. He shook the, it, I'm it surprised was, you say they were good. It, it was Jules Holland thinking I mean, I, I, I thought, I, I, I thought, hold on, this is missing something. Yeah. This, this is missing someone from Squeeze vamping over them. <laughs> exactly. But, um, yeah. they did, they did well without him. Extraordinary. Uh, yeah. Well, here we are then. We're back. XFM 104.9. Carl had to leave early last week, but, um, you can you stay to the end this week, mate? Or? Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't need another holiday. Oh! Oh, he's started already. I mean, you Steve's know, made you look like a bit of a twat already. <laughs> and it's only five past one. But the only reason you don't go on holiday is because you have to spend money. <laughs> oh, and he's gone straight back! Well, he's gone straight back! <laughs> I can't come back to that. <laughs> oh, it's just, dear. it's just, uh, it's only way. It's just absolute. That was, that was oh, the last holiday he had. Case. Last holiday Steve had, he, he sort of found a third world country so he could live like a mm. king for a week. It was Cuba, wasn't it? Going to Cuba, amazing. You can leave, we can almost rule the place. <laughs> if you want for Castro, I'd have been in charge. Kind of cash I was flashing around. <laughs> and, 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 and they'll do anything for a dollar over there. It's extraordinary, literally. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Definitely, and I went to Kenya so, before just, that. So he thought to the prostitute, who said no. Mm. You were like, <laughs> yeah, well, it was two dollars. I mean, I'm not made of money. <laughs> Did you have a good holiday, Carl? Uh, yeah, it was alright. It's alright. Went down to Cornwall. Man, so you're going to the most of people down there, Steve. Well, don't look at me, I'm not from Cornwall. Well, you're from that sort of area. Well, not really, but never Genetically, mind. Genetically, means. Right. They're weird. Mm. Well, you must have slotted right in. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they weird? What do they look like? It's all, uh, sort of odd people. Uh, lot of old people, but not just old, sort of messed up old. What do you mean, messed up old? It's just got, you can't just say that. There's, there's, there's... There was a woman with a funny neck. <laughs> Okay, we're more yeah. well, funny. Why does she have a funny neck? If you were writing an essay, you wouldn't say there was this woman with a funny neck. How would you describe it? She, uh, sort of had her head, like, pointed down all the time. Like, don't do it, this is radio. No, but just for you, I don't know. Like, yeah. Come out, like. yeah. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, brilliant. I don't you... know, I was saying to Suzanne, not what happened, you know, what do you think? Because Suzanne knows everything, that's the yeah. good thing about her being with you. You just ask her, what happened to her, and Suzanne goes, Carl, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been here before. Does Suzanne, you know? your girlfriend, or mummy as you call her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sparks are flying. Yeah. I got a little bit of chocolate, can you just lick a tissue and wipe it off? Oh. Well, she said it might have been like, cause back in the olden days they carried stuff on the... The olden <laughs> days? <laughs> what do you mean the olden days? <laughs> this one was probably what, 50? Uh, no, she looked about 70. Yeah. But like I do on Cheeky Freak of the Week, right, I always turn it round and we get, like, something good out something of it. Something positive, yeah. yeah. I said, I said to Suzanne, I bet she finds a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Always staring at the ground, yeah. <laughs> oh, always, dear. Always, always oh. So, um, you Maybe she just had, uh, new shoes and she was admiring them. Yeah. Do you think of that? Before you uh, point the finger and judge? Mm. Or, or a necklace was too heavy. <laughs> exactly. So, you're back ref refreshed, so, uh, what have we got for this week? Have we sort of, because we didn't meet last night, which, uh, we usually meet no, sort of five. I called you and said it'd be good if we could, uh, you know, I wasn't getting back into London Well, I was up for it, I was up for it. Past seven, yeah. but, yeah. yeah, but we all need to be there, it's not yeah. because me and you being there. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. No, you're right, I mean, you're absolutely right that I wasn't there yet, because I wasn't willing to, uh, just be uh, governed by your particular schedule. You want to jet back in from another of your holidays right, it wasn't at eight o'clock. Wasn't a holiday, it wasn't a holiday though. Well, so what, so you what do you mean? Tank. What, 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 what do you mean it wasn't a holiday? What was it? Uh, he was, well, it was a treat, wasn't it, from my mum and dad. So it wasn't a holiday. What, so you didn't enjoy the five days off? You'd rather have been here moaning eight hours a day? 
seven hours a day. You see, we said last week that you're always whinging. Here you are whinging now. I'm and you're saying it's not even a holiday. You're saying it's not even a holiday. What right. was it then? Would like a nurse who took sick children to Florida, would they say having a great holiday? Sorry, what, what, what particular ailment did your parents have for the week that they had to, they had to fly in Carl mm. Pilkington, MD? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Well, all right, it was holiday. Well yeah. then. Good. Now have some honesty. Now have some truth. So you us. came in, you came back from your holiday, you wanted to start back to work straight away, Steve couldn't be bothered to meet. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. So we've got nothing prepared for this. Well, you can rely on Rockbusters. <laughs> right, that's coming We've got up. nothing. <laughs> uh, Monkey News. Even though you were away, you were still working. Still doing stuff. Did you go to the Monkey Sanctuary? I'll tell you about that. Tell right. us about it. Play a record. Right. What do you want? That's Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, I thought yeah, that yeah. was Rock. But of course, Rick is available on their greatest hits. Brilliant. If you want to. I, I mean, that, that's how I rock. So yeah. I, I know, I know they, uh, I'm very much the shape of a cherub as well. Well, right? indeed. Indeed. Naked with a yeah. couple of... And a rosy big arse. And a, tr a trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have trumpets? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've just had an email here, um, Monkey News. Yeah. From a listener. Yeah. Monkey spotted holidaying in Cornwall. <laughs> a, chimp, <laughs> a chimp was spotted holidaying in Cornwall last week after befriending a family of three. One onlooker said, it was incredible. He dressed and behaved exactly like a human being. He even settled the hotel bill at the end of their stay. The only telltale sign was his lack of table manners and the incoherent babble when he opened his mouth. <laughs> there we are. So well, what do you think of that, Carl? That's the listeners, Carl. That's oh. Joanne. Oh. Amusing, articulate. Accurate. She remembered Accurate. exactly who's there and everything, sitting yeah. in the bill. It's all there. So, I mean, even though people think that you're slightly simian, uh, you know, slightly less than human on the evolutionary ladder, they do listen to you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know who's more stupid in the end, you or the listeners. Well, you may recall, Rick, at the end of last week when Carl had to shoot off early, uh, we issued a little request yeah. for listeners just to bombard Carl's email with um, just pointless emails that really weren't about anything, just to clog up his email for when he returned. Yeah. Rick, they sent them all to us. Brilliant. I mean, that's the kind of <laughs> listeners that we've got. We've got reams here on our email of just junk. I mean, it's like a Marx Brothers plot, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just listen. I, listen I got, to what we say. I got one, uh, about a shaved cat. <laughs> well, that's not pointless. I'll be reading that later. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be I'm reading, happy. That'll keep me going for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'll be reading that. Later. Did you get to the Monkey Sanctuary? Because this was the big thing. You were going into Cornwall, you were going to visit the Monkey Sanctuary. I've never seen someone more excited. You had two days put aside for the Monkey Sanctuary. Mm, I know. How did it go? Monkey World? Um, we were on our way, right? I found like a little, uh, in the little cottage that we had, right? It's like a little, uh, little folder, mm -hmm. you know, with little leaflets in saying if you, you know, if you're into mountains, you want to go here. Yeah. If you're into castles and that. Uh, yeah, little monkey world. on the leaflet, right? So I thought I'll be needing that. Took that out, made sure. That's safe and yeah. that, right? We get in the car, getting ready to go. Uh, my dad says, where is it? I'll look on the back. It's in a place called Low or something like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, we're on our way. Can't believe me, look. It's going to be a great day and all that. Yeah. And then, uh, start looking at the leaflet, right? And, uh, noticed. Didn't have any chimps there. Yeah, it's not, it's not Monkey World. It wasn't a Monkey World. Well, how, what, no. what was it called then? Something like, M m monkey Town. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just, it, it had like woolly monkeys in it. That's, that's what it had what? Woolly monkeys. What are woolly monkeys? Those things that uh, Johnny Vegas off the advert. Right. Loads of them. They're dumped now since ITV Digital yeah. went under, so they just put them in a cage. I don't no, understand. They're woolly, they're, they're like, um, they're sort of like little fluffy, little baboon type things, woolly monkeys. I mean, not, it's not your chimp. It right. is not your, it's not your classic chimpanzee. So did the car screech to a halt? It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like the mission in Armageddon. As you said, abort. Um, <laughs> we're on the way back. <laughs> so how far have uh, you got before you bothered to read the leaf there? Uh, uh, probably about five miles right. away from where we were. So what did you do with yourself? You must have been distraught. We well, went they to... broke down and then they heard banjo music. <laughs> yeah, dun, yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. No, we went to a, uh, Sort of a, an amusement place. Right, I'd, I'd love to see you in that. What, with, with putting those coins in, so it has to roll down, and they go flat, and then an arm pushes it them. It was one of them. Really? But I I've spent out years on that when I was little. Well, there's oh. a new one. I can't be bothered explaining it, but it's a con. Uh, we went to this place, right? My, my mum and dad had been there before, and yeah. they said, you'll love it. It's brilliant. It's got, like, uh, a war bit in it. A war bit? Right. Yeah, like, because they know I'm into tanks and stuff. Yeah. 
So you'll be loving that. So, sorry, I didn't know you were into tanks. No. Well, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right. He's gone from one of his childhood passions to where they're all right. <laughs> I know, yeah. Go on. And, uh, but it was, it was, it was awful. I mean, my mum and dad had been there before and he said, no, you'll love it, but yeah. it was like a really miserable day. Sure. Right? Uh, all the rides and that were broke. Yeah. Broke? Uh, it just reminds you of Manchester. <laughs> 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 My dad just ended up, uh, he was more interested, there was a really fat family there. <laughs> well, presumably he was breaking into the machines, <laughs> trying to scoop off the cash. No, no, I like the <laughs> fact that those poor fat family were going, why are those people looking at us? Yeah. Oh, do you want a ride one? No, but they, they we're were- not, We're not a ride. <laughs> they were massive and he just like, look at that, look at this face and that. A whole family. Yeah. Just, you know, fat. Bloaters, yeah. Oh, uh, right. No, but he does, he does, he does, because fat, there's no, no need for it, is there? <laughs> and he, he was really like, oh god. And then he wanted to follow them into the house of mirrors to see what they'd look like. <laughs> uh, but my mum, my mum had got bored. She went off to buy a little, uh, Snow White figure. She couldn't believe her luck. It was only two ninety nine. Yeah. She thought it was going to be really expensive. Sure, so she bought one of them. Yeah. Uh, so she enjoyed that. And then my dad says, come on, we go in. It's rubbish, this. <laughs> well, the fat family wouldn't let him play with him. So, uh, he just said on the way home, he said, I can safely say, that I never want to go there again before I die. <laughs> so, that was that. And then we went home. Why would he ever give you that information? In case it was like a, a secret birthday present. Yeah. Go, oh god, what if they get me a trip to here? Or if he's in a coma and you go, I'll tell you what, I'll Dad. try to bring him out of it. <laughs> that fat <laughs> couple. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. By his bedside. <laughs> but, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am. After yeah. spending like a week with them. What, they, said, they told, they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid or? No, just, just like, you know, the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, no, they were saying things like, Suzanne, so, uh, why is the moon out at night in the sun <laughs> of the day? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, God, was, there's it, three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces <laughs> It was the bit when my dad said, don't waste money on a coffin for him, just put him in a bin bag. <laughs> Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Reading the paper yesterday, Rick, they, uh, were talking about the, fact that Blair has been, I think, he's been in Greece, um, discussing EU matters. Oh, yeah. And they used, uh, the old Trojan horse analogy yeah. to say, you know, here's a particular policy and it seems like they're trying to sneak, sneak in, some, in sneak in some kind yeah. of dubious Spies ideas. to something else. Exactly. And, uh, it's always struck me, ever since I was first introduced to the Trojan horse theory, I never understood how it'd come about. Do you know what I mean? Sorry, I, 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 I Carl has got a frown on him, like, a thing I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, not Tony Blair is the Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 you know what the Trojan Horse was? Go on. Um, Have you come across this before? Have you heard of it before? Um, wasn't that Ascot or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Well, the Trojan Horse, what happened was, uh, it's, it's a famous kind of Greek story. Um, about the fact that, uh, the Greeks- In olden laid, times, Carl, yeah, olden times Olden is, times, you know, specifically. the 70s. Yeah. The Greeks laid siege to Troy for six years. Um, Waiting. Basically, things have got out of hand. Uh, I think the Trojans had done something with Helen, and someone else was annoyed. Anyway, it all got very complicated, it got out of hand, and the, uh, you know, the Greeks, Helen, the one with the mashed up face, because they used to use it to launch ships. Mm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the Greeks laid siege to Troy, for six years, right, and they weren't getting anywhere. They were outside the gates. They were saying, "Let us in." They weren't. They were. Blah, blah, blah. So all they did was they all disappeared. They all. They, well, they wanted to get in and kill everyone. Yeah, exactly. that's why they wouldn't be letting in. But they couldn't get inside the city walls. So what they did was they left as a gift for the Tro Trojans. They left an enormous wooden horse, okay, uh, as a gift, and then they all buggered off. Like forty foot high, fifty foot. Like I mean, a big, you know, big wooden horse. an arc. Of and a horse. the Trojans wheeled it into the city. So that's nice. Thought, what a lovely gift. Yeah. And, lo and behold, he was hiding inside, but the entire Greek army, they left out, killed everyone in their sleep. Yeah. Alright, and that's where the famous idea of the Trojan horses come from, you know, sneaking something in, disguised as something else. Alright. Alright. Yeah. Okay? So if he ever... Yeah. He doesn't really understand, does he? No, but, to be honest, nor do I. Well, I, this is the problem I've always had with this. It, I, I, it... Because I don't understand who comes up with the idea, I mean, you I, I can't think that was the best idea. Well, no, no. There must be other ways. If they come up with that, how long did it take them to go? When they said, one, one, one before I said, oh, 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 whoa, 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 um, can I have a word? Go on, General, go on, yeah. um, I've got an idea. Yeah. Build a big horse, right, hide inside it, and then, then, ah, 
I know what you're thinking, they won't let us in even in the horse. Yeah. Leave it as a gift. Brilliant. Right. Who are you? That's the best idea. Are you the guy that came up with, <laughs> why don't we get a giant bra <laughs> and twing everyone <laughs> over the yeah, horse? Yeah. Let's get a, let's get a hundred foot ruler. And you know like at school we used to like flick the teacher's yeah. ass with like a, right, I could flick you over one at a time. Right. On this giant <laughs> ruler. That's your idea. <laughs> it's on the table. Yeah. We've got a couple of suggestions on the way. What about a million elastic bands tied together, yeah, and you all hold it down and then I just let you go. Right. And you all ping over and then you kill him in their sleep. You're the best tactician we've got, are you? Uh, what- the other thing is, right, these people open the- for some reason open the door. Well, I don't understand. Firstly, there's suddenly- the- the army that's laid siege to them for six years has disappeared in yeah. their place, an enormous gift of a giant wooden horse. Oh, they probably don't want to kill us now, but the, what they've done is they've built us a Yeah, they've a built horse. us a great gift. Presumably there was a giant kind of card or something, yeah. you know. Um, something for you, you know, sorry about the laying siege and everything, forgive you. Yeah. Here's an enormous gift, is it? <laughs> Here's an enormous Trojan horse. We know it's what you've always wanted. We're- we're not inside it. <laughs> exactly. Why did they write that? Yeah. That's suspicious. <laughs> but it's- Well, I wheel mean, it- wheel it in anyway. But in terms of it as an idea initially, I mean, we're gonna give him a gift, well what should we do? We could bake an enormous quiche, <laughs> yeah. be inside that, we could have an enormous soap on a rope as a It's the fact that it's an enormous horse, yeah. an enormous wooden horse as a gift anyway. I don't know if this was a, a popular gift at the time, but it's also the stupidity of the Trojans saying, brilliant, I've always wanted an enormous wooden horse, well what are we gonna do with it? <laughs> what yeah, are we gonna we'll do with it? Anyway, leave it. Wheel it in anyway, leave it in let's go to sleep, let's worry about it tomorrow. <laughs> <Exactly>. Let's, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's this idea of going, someone going, right, is this definitely the best idea? And they go, yeah, and they look to the carpenter. Yeah. And he goes, well, it's gonna take a while. Yeah, we've got to get wood. We've got to get other Well, you haven't put a door in. Yeah. How are we gonna get out there? Doesn't it look like a horse? It is. It's the worst horse I've ever seen. Why, it's like a cow. Well, yeah, the other yeah, is where we hide. <laughs> it's a horse. It's got no tail. It's, yeah, well, that's the, the rope that you climb up. But I don't know if it's one of those things where, again, because we kind of learn these things at school, that somewhere along the line, the truth of it has disappeared, and we are... Well, I imagine it's lost a bit in translation. Yeah. Because, uh... In Eohippus e in Greek means a giant tank. <laughs> right, so that yeah. actually was a Sherman. Yeah. And it burst through and it shot them all. Yeah. But yeah. of course, down the years, they've tried. Look at Carl's face. Look at Carl's face. If everyone on webcam, Carl, just keep that face and look up to the camera. Right? Just, right, get a, get a look at that now. Play a record, Carl. Educating Carl, we should bring that back. We should bring that back. Yeah. What do you want to learn about next week? We've talked. This picture on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Alright. So you've been educated there, haven't you? The yeah, Trojan horse. Yeah, yeah. The Trojan horse. And that's of course where the phrase, be where Greeks bearing gifts, comes from. <laughs> Silence again. Yeah. You ever what, heard what? that one? Go on. What, what, start again? Be where Greeks bearing gifts. Right. What do you think that means? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what is that? Is that used worldwide or what? Will they say that in Greece as well, or? Because uh. <laughs> imagine Christmas Day is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't actually mean beware of Greeks wearing gifts. It's more to do with like maybe it's too good to be true, or you know, it's just the opposite to don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, for probably where it came from. Was Justin from South End, Molly, and he just said. uh, for the Trojans not to have spotted that it was a trick, they must have been the biggest bunch of moronic mm, yeah, ever to have walked the earth. Does Carl have any Trojan in him by any chance? <laughs> Cheeky, isn't it? Eh? What? Never <laughs> mind. What? I think that probably <laughs> proves it. I thought of another one like as well. I was saying, you may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I've never heard- I don't think I've heard that. I have heard it, but I don't think I've ever used it in common parlance. Well, it's like if you're gonna do something, you know, you might as well go the whole hog, depending on the, the outcome. Because it's based on reality, that's why I like it, because obviously the poor people used to poach, and if they were caught stealing, you know, a sheep or anything, they would be hung. So if you're gonna get caught, don't steal a lamb, you know, at least feed your family for a few weeks. Right, sure. Kill a sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually hung. But killing a sheep. Oh, your dad would be in trouble, down in oh. Wales, stealing stuff from that, uh, oh. from that oh. phone box. Well, he has a couple of sayings, right? Your father? Uh, yeah, I've, I've never asked him what they mean. Um <laughs> Why would you? Ask what, Suzanne. One is, uh don't try and teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means, uh, it's patronising to, 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 of course, of course I know that. You're, you're talking to someone who knows more about this subject than you. 
But how did that happen then? How did that saying come about? Well, it's not. It, it's it's a totally made up thing. It's like your granny sucks eggs, isn't she? Because she's she's older than you, and it's probably a lost art or something. All right. Uh, and the other one, um, don't sucks don't eggs. Sucks yeah. eggs. Yeah. Sucks eggs. Sorry, I thought you said something else. <laughs> Uh, yeah. don't nudge your granny when she's shaving. What? what? Don't, sorry. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. Don't nudge your- sorry, sorry, well, that's slower, I can't- Don't, don't, don't nudge, nudge your, your granny when she's having a shave. Well, what is that in context? Because I can't work out what the analogy is there, because that might just be you, you, when you were little, you used to run up to your granny while she was shaving or something. But what, uh, why is your granny shaving? Well, no, what, what context is that said in? Tell me the last time your dad ever said that, and I'll try and work out what it means. Uh. I can't remember. I can't. I, I, I don't are know. you sure these are specific to your granny? <laughs> I was just saying, why are you nudging your granny? She was going, yeah. Get lost, Carl. She was shaving off her moustache. Or oh. giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's grotesque. <laughs> suck yeah. an egg, suck an egg, suck an egg. Suck an egg. Suck an egg. Oh, 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 God. <laughs> that's made, that's yeah, made that's it really worse. worse. Carl's granny <laughs> sucking eggs whilst I. Uh, <laughs> that giving is my. Giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> We've no idea. I don't know what that means. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. <laughs> what, yeah. Parmesan? I, I don't know. Maybe someone knows. You might be right, maybe. Well, this email in. Tell us. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Rockbusters, Carl. Go yeah. on. Should we get the ball rolling? Let me just find the, uh, yeah, the no, gifts here, no, the no. little treats. We've got the album from the Coral. You know what I think about that. We've got, uh, what? in sound feeder. Well, it's just a novelty record, isn't it? Yeah. Um, same. we've got, uh, on DVD, more great comedy moments, favourite clips from the best of contemporary BBC comedy. We got Partridge on the front there. We've got uh, one of the guys from Red Dwarf and uh, brilliant. No, there's <laughs> good stuff on there. Smash hits, the reunion, more great eighties tunes. Catch a goo goos on there, uh, plus some stuff. Too shy. <laughs> it is too yeah, shy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, let me see if you can guess which ones. Go on. Tiffany. Uh, well, yeah, I know it. The only one. I think uh, we're alone. Now. Yeah, I think we're alone. Yeah. Um, Melon Kim. Uh, respectable. Mm hmm. Human League. That'd be. Oh wow. What would it be? Would they have got? Don't you want me? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Last take on me? Yep, yeah. well done. Um, Madness? Baggy trousers. Of course. Uh, Kim Wilde? Kids in America? Yeah, so there's just all those treats. If you, if, yeah. you, if you like a song from an 80s band, it's probably on there. Yeah, okay. Plus we've also got on uh, VHS, uh, Graham Norton, some kind of best of compilation from his TV show. So, uh, there are the, um... Hold on, is it, is it the one where he talks to sort of female gay icons and, and looks at the internet? Because <laughs> that's my favourite one. Um, right, there you go, let's do Rockbusters. Right, email then. only, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, email in ricky.gvase at xfm.co.uk if you know the answer. Right, first one. Uh, bit of a cryptic clue, if you haven't heard it before. Well, not cryptic, we're wrong. <laughs> um, what, what is Carl thinking? If you go into France by boat, I'd get your fags on there, because it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Bob Holness. Oh. Sorry, we're out of time. <laughs> I, uh, it's, sorry, your minute's up. You've won nothing. I was reading that question out. <laughs> sorry, right. so what's the well, let's do it again. I want it to be exactly the same, word perfect. I bet you it will change uh, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost it. Go right. to France, buy yourself a bag yeah. of fags okay. cheaper. Okay, okay, fingers on the buzzers. Um, you've only got ten seconds to win the, uh, the gold run. Okay, first up. Here, I'll tell you what, no, seriously, if you're thinking of going to France, well, don't, you know, because go on the ferry, get the fags there, because it's cheaper. Go on. <laughs> All right, so that one again. Uh, if you want to buy some fags, you're going over to France on the boat, get them on there, because you'll save a few quid. B.F. B.F. Right? <laughs> B.F. Okay. Okay. All right, the second one. Um, mm. This little uh, <laughs> foreign cafe is growing its own steak. <laughs> <laughs> this little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Yeah. yeah. This little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Go on. D. Alright. Right. Okay. And the last one, uh, uh, uh <laughs> Is that uh, part of it? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best, isn't he? <laughs> He's the best. The Jamaican fella might have screamed oh, this on the, uh, wrong. on the Titanic. What? <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have scre might have screamed this on the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what's it start with? It's, uh, C, D, that one. <laughs> Jamaican phone might have screamed this on the Titanic. Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Please don't phone in. Um, if you can get those, we just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> uh, that's featuring City Spud. I don't know if you're <laughs> aware of that, but uh, there we are. Good, nice summer tune. Carl, tell uh, Steve what you just told me when Steve was in the toilet. Then 
Right, do you know, I'd, I'd just been away with my mum and dad and that, mm. and uh, one of the things I always like doing is having a good chat with my dad about stuff he got up to when he was a kid and that. Yeah. Right, because he got up to loads of stuff, and every time I see him, he tells me something, and I thought, well, it's like, why are you just telling me that now? It's yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, to me, he's kind of like Ronnie Biggs or someone. He's just the most extraordinary kind of well, this, this character. Happened, character. Right? I, I can't remember. There was a delay yesterday. There was problems on the Paddington line, yeah. and he was saying, "Our oh, trains aren't what they used to be." Sure. Um, he said, "You know, he said I was looking." They used to be horses, didn't they? Well, he, he was like, he was looking in the booklet, and it was saying, "Oh, you can have your bags collected if you want, but it costs you a fiver." Yeah. So that's outrageous. Sure, of course. Right. So he said, "That's the problem with this country." Uh, we've got good with computers and that, but when it comes to, like, getting service, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Right? So he said, when I worked on the trains, you know, and he was going on like this, that and the other, so I said, oh, I didn't know you worked on the trains. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, when I was 18, right, it was his job to get the coal, right, and chuck it in the engine. Uh-huh. Right? And one day he's in, uh, he's in Grand Central Station in Manchester, which is now the GMEX Centre. Right. Right? And that was, like, the main station. And, uh, he was in there. The fellow who should have been sort of driving the train, yeah. right? He said, oh, I'm just nipping to the pub. Sure. So you just stay here, keep the engine topped up and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, yeah. Oh, For a quick getaway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so the fellow goes in, in the pub, and my dad's in there, you know, putting the coal on. He, he did his bacon and eggs on a little, uh, a little shovel. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, fella comes up, he says, right, can you move the, uh, train forward now? Oh, blow me. So he was like, oh. So he didn't want to say, oh, the fella's in the pub, because he'd know, he'd say, well, what's he doing in the pub? He should be working, right? So he said, yeah, 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 no problem, I'll sort it out. Right, so he, uh, puts it, puts it into gear, or whatever you do on, on them trains, Sure, right? puts it into first, yeah. Starts going forward. Now, people who don't know about trains, something that I learnt, is if you're carrying a load of coal or whatever on the back of it, they don't have brakes on each carriage, right? It's only the engine that has brakes on it. Uh -huh. So when you pull the brakes on the on the engine, the whole weight of what it's pulling is pushing you forward. Sure. Right? Yeah. So he doesn't realise this though, because he's uh, he's just used to cooking bacon and eggs and chucking coal in Of course, yeah. Right? So you've got to slam the brakes on sooner than you would normally. Yeah. Well, you have to anticipate it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he didn't know that, so yeah. he's pulling in, he's thinking, right, well, I'll, put the brakes, I'll put the brakes on now. Yeah. Right? Puts the brakes on, the train just keeps going, he's going, oh god, it's not stopping. Sure. It ploughs right through the signal box. <laughs> Right, uh, loads the of damage. The pulling the singles don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loads of loads of damage done. Apparently, it, it if it was today's money, yeah, it'd be about three to four <laughs> million pounds worth of damage. It it shut the station <laughs> off <laughs> for four weeks, um, but he didn't lose his job. The fella had lost his job. The one who was in the in the pub. Yeah, um, he said the funny thing was, he said like four million pounds worth of damage. Um, he did his ankle, uh, his uh, his wrist in. He had three weeks off sick and got paid. <laughs> so it's brilliant. <laughs> so I love your family. It's extraordinary. The Pilkinson gene. Weird, isn't it? I'd like to see a documentary following you and your family. You'd have to get the family involved. Now the sort of stuff my dad goes on about. We'd never put it on telly. <laughs> <laughs>